Welcome. Thank you for joining us for this JSA TV interview. I am Greg Elliott, VP of Business Development with 1623 Barnum. And with us today is Mike Rockwell. He is the global head of solution architects with Megaport. So thanks for joining us today, Mike. Hey. I've been super excited about this conversation. So really appreciate uh, it. Yeah, me too. Uh, it's great to be here with uh, yourself and JSA TV. Uh, for the viewers and yourself out there, I do use a lot of hand motions and expressions. This is a, a video production, uh, so I'm not having a medical event, uh, just, you know, forewarning here. <laughs> I always like to get that out of the way because it can be good yeah, to know. Some good gyration. I speak with my hands, hands too, so I get it. <laughs> so let's jump into it. Um, so over the last, you know, however long, uh, we've had multiple, multiple conversations with customers, potential customers, industry experts. Um, about cybersecurity and how the network is a key component to that. Can you shed some light on you know, how Megaport could be used as a tool um, in, that, in that fight um, of the, for better network security? Yeah, no, that's a great question. I think anytime we're onboarding a customer, uh, the first thing that comes up is they want to you know, validate our security profile, right? So we're, we're diving straight into the questionnaires. We're asking 100 questions, right? So they always want to validate that, that we're a secure option for their network. Um, a little just to kind of preface about what Megaport does, we're a global network uh, as a service provider. Uh, so primarily customers are building on-demand private connectivity from data center to the cloud. Certainly there's other ways that customers utilize the network, but um, you know, we are a network as a service provider. Um, when it comes to security, it's kind of interesting. I think there's, there's three things that come to mind uh, in our conversations. Um, one is simplicity, another one is control, and another is flexibility. So when I talk about simplicity, it's, <laughs> it, it is still shocking. Uh, the term network sprawl comes to mind uh, quite often. We'll get on the phone with the customer, we'll start talking about their cloud connectivity strategy, uh, and they'll pull up a Visio diagram, right? And this thing looks like a plate of spaghetti and meatballs. I want to throw the sauce on the screen and start soaking it up, right? Mm -hmm. um, but one of the issues with that is they start to dig into it deeper. And we're strictly talking about kind of the data center, the cloud connectivity portion. And the conversation will progress into, hey, what's uh, what are we using this link for? What are we using this link for? What's this connected to? What resources ultimately are, are we trying to reach from this location to this location? And you know, that's a huge security risk, right? Uh, if we don't know what network links we're using for one, that's an issue. If we don't know what endpoints ultimately they're connecting to, that's an issue as well. So when I talk about simplicity and really in the form of Megaport, a lot of it comes back into, they wanna take control of that network infrastructure and they wanna be able to manage it from a single platform. Really a lot of the same conversations around SD-WAN where they're taking their control of their network, they have a management platform, able to push down all their policies through their controller to all their edge devices and have that single platform for management. And bringing that into the kind of network connectivity model, that's one of the easy resources that Megaport provides is that management console where they can see all those network um, connections and see the endpoints ultimately they're connected to. The other piece is, is control. Uh, so Megaport, we operate a private network that uh, any endpoint from A to B that the customer is connecting to, it's over Megaport's private layer two network. Um, so they know exactly from point A to point B that it's routing across a private platform. We're not handing it off to a third party provider or, or routing it over the internet. Um, so really we're taking the, the, giving the customer control to route the traffic how they like over a transparent connection. The next piece is, is flexibility. Um, in the world today with uh, distributed applications, distributed users, we wanna have the flexibility to make, it, make change at a moment's notice, right? So that old traditional architecture of waiting 30, 60 days, um, you know, that just doesn't work anymore. So they want to have that flexibility. From a pure security standpoint, some of the key things that, that we're seeing, MacSec uh, comes up quite a bit, right? We're providing uh, layer two uh, transport across our network. So MacSec being a layer two uh, encryption or security uh, protocol. Um, a lot of, a couple of the, the cloud providers, AWS and Azure specifically come to mind. They offer it over their dedicated connectivity model for their private connections and express route um, and direct connect. Um, so we're helping customers facilitate those connections today. Uh, and that's definitely a huge topic. It sits outside of kind of that standard partner model, um, but certainly gives the customer that simplicity and control. The other piece is sassy, uh, I'm sure, uh, is I think there was a recent Nanog event. My guess is that uh, you know, secure access service edge was <laughs> top of mind. Yeah, they talked about it quite a bit. 
<laughs> yeah, uh, I'm sure, sure they did. And, uh, you know, we're getting involved uh, in, in some of those SASE solutions as well. Um, so we have a, a Megaport virtual edge that allows customers to deploy virtual network functions on Megaport compute. And then they have the benefit of building out the private connectivity from the data centers like 1623 Farnham, uh, your data center uh, to the cloud providers, but also integrating that underlay into their SD-WAN overlay. And where that really comes into play from a security perspective is now they're able to build out these, these virtual pops. So maybe you have a customer that's there in 1623 Farnham, they don't have a data center presence or a presence that sits within Europe. They can deploy an MVE and essentially turn up a, a SASE pop where they're able to incorporate their network as a service and security as a service on one central platform. Uh, and that's integrated with, uh, with their SD-WAN providers. So Cisco, Fortinet, and Versa are, are some of the folks that we're working with. So, you know, those are some of the ways that, uh, you know, we at Megaports, uh, you know, address some of customer security concerns. Oh, that's, that's great. Um, so can we go a little bit deeper into maybe the higher regulated verticals like healthcare or government or financial? I mean, how do you tackle those? Oh, man. Well, we work across all verticals, as I know you all do. Uh, right. I think in the data center space, uh, <laughs> this is probably your daily thing. Keeping up with these certifications uh, it's, it's got to be quite uh, quite the the resource, uh, a lot of resources dedicated to that, right? Sure. Um, you know, our, our network itself uh, is, is built in third-party data centers, uh, such as yourselves at 1623. And, you know, so a lot of accreditations and a lot of the security is, is built in within that data center. Um, from a network perspective, you know, we're, we're taking the customer out of that data center to the cloud provider edge primarily. So when you start thinking about, um, you know, the verticals and government, uh, for instance, I think is one of the, the, the topics that's in the question. Um, you have to get out of the data center. You need to get to the edge of the cloud. You need to be able to access a government on-ramp to reach uh, your, your government cloud resources, right? That sit in that regulated environment outside of the commercial cloud environment. Um, so with Megaport, those are the type of connections that, that we're facilitating. Um, to, you know, with Azure, um, Google, uh, and a, a Azure, Google, uh, AWS, and Oracle uh, um, primarily, uh, and they all have different ways that they set up those connectivity models, um, and, and certainly we're able to provide that for them. Uh, you start thinking across the different verticals, and again, we're we're connecting uh, network resources from point A to point B, so we're, we're providing that private layer two connectivity, uh, so it is a secure platform. Uh, one of the interesting things or one of the interesting customers that we're working with is Intercontinental Exchange or ICE. Um, they're a NASDAQ clearinghouse. Um, they utilize our network uh, as part of the underlay for their ICE Global Cloud Connect offering. And essentially through ICE, they have their own dedicated network where part of uh, the fees that they're trying to access it within the public clouds. Um, so they're utilizing our network to build private connectivity from the edge of their network, from their data centers to the cloud provider edge, and ultimately to access these uh, data feeds that they're pulling back down into their network for their customers. Um, so that's one of the financial use cases uh, that we support. And um, certainly there's a lot more detail around that that customers can look at on our website. But I think, you know, one of the interesting things that uh, uh, we got from their head of their global network uh, services is that you know, our Megaport software to find uh, private network is, is really purpose built for the capital markets. So I think if someone at ICE is giving us that type of credibility from a, a security perspective that's, uh, you know, our network is, uh, is considered to be secure across all the verticals that we work with. That's great. I, um, yeah, just back to your point on the, just all your case studies that Megaport has on it. I spent a lot of time going through uh, Megaport when you, when you guys uh, decided to, to come to um, 1623 and pop us with the dual feed, but like it's, it helps to see those use cases out there and how um, Megaport is is helping so many different types of businesses. This yeah, really cool. I think it's. I mean, any any uh, you know service provider out there, uh, you know, getting a, a use case is not. I, I think you would agree, right? It's it's not easy, right? It takes time. It takes resources within the business. So, you know, I think it, it. If you if you're lucky enough or you're 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 good enough to get a use case, that really shows the value that your customer is bringing to the business. Yeah. part that your service is bringing to the business. Sure. Um, and, and so mo most of our customers um, and other companies out there have a hybrid cloud strategy. And, um, and, and you kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but um, like how, how can um, businesses 
use Megaport as they're trying to educate or execute on their digital transformation strategy? Yeah, <laughs> hybrid multi-cloud. I mean, that's that's our our daily conversation, right? Sure. Uh, you know, I think if if I'm an expert at anything, which I, I don't know if I am or not, but uh, yeah, I feel like that's probably what I'm an expert at. I think if you talk about it every day, you probably become somewhat knowledgeable. That there's no way around it. <laughs> sure. But uh, you know, the biggest thing about when you start thinking about building, uh, you know, hybrid connectivity or building connectivity to the cloud is, is you know, at 1623, you have Google in your data center, right? You've got the edge, uh, the Google edge in your data center. Customers can connect directly to 623, connect right to the Google network and great for council bluffs, that central region with Google, you know, outstanding option, right? But you know, as you know, not the edge of each cloud provider is not going to sit within your particular data center, right? Or any data center provider. It doesn't. It doesn't matter, right? Right. They're, they're not everywhere. Um, so you have to have a strategy to be able to get outside of your data center and get to the edge if you're going to have a hybrid cloud strategy, right? Sure. Um, and one of the great things about Megaport and where um, you know we fit that need and we we assist some of the the folks that sit within 1623 Farnham. They can essentially connect to our network in 1623 as an example, and we have 700 data enabled data centers across the globe. But you know, 1623 customer connects uh, to our network in your data center. It essentially brings the cloud provider edge uh, to the customer because once they're connected to the Megaport network, they're able to build private connectivity to the cloud provider edge across the globe. So a great example in this particular use case: you're sitting in Omaha, Nebraska. You connect at 820 or 1623. You build a private connection across the Megaport network to say AWS or Azure in Chicago if you want to go east. If you want to go west, you can build connectivity into Denver. You can build it all along the east or west coast, but you can also extend your network outside of the United States. You can build connectivity uh, across Europe. You can build connectivity across APAC. So when we start thinking about hybrid cloud connectivity and um, you know having a strategy and, and building your network, you know, one of the things that we like to say is really future proofing that network sure because we all know that in working with our customers that maybe i'm in aws today um maybe maybe i don't have any intention of going to gcp or anywhere else but inevitably someone's going to find a resource in uh, in another cloud that they're going to want to access and they're going to want to build that connectivity so you have to have a strategy uh, that allows you to really uh, pivot and make change at a moment's notice and that's really where our network is a uh, purpose built to facilitate those types of connections. Yeah, that's great. I, um, so I've been in, in the business for about 15 years in the carrier hotel space. And so I've seen, you know, how, how customers can be successful when they, they have multiple options and as their business changes and scales and whatever, they have to pivot. They have, you know, at a carrier hotel type facility, you have 50 carriers and ISPs. You can, now have uh, on ramps to cloud different clouds, but then I think Megaport just takes it to the next level. Um, just just to your point, so um, re really love that that you guys have a, a diverse uh, deployment at 1623. It's just it's another um, you know builder to the the network e ecosystem. Do, do you have any interesting? Uh, the ICE was a great example, but do you have some other? interesting ways customers are your customers are using megaport that you can share yeah <laughs> uh, i think there's many ways and we continue sure. to expand i think what's interesting is our customers uh sometimes find uh, ways outside of maybe what we had envisioned for the network which is which is outstanding uh, it's incredible really um i think the other interesting thing is when you talk about hybrid cloud and and multi-cloud um you know, when customers do work in a multi-cloud environment, they want to be able to route directly between those clouds, but also back into their data center. Um, so, you know, as a service type of functionality is, is another great tool to have in the bag. Um, Cause if you are going to develop a multi-cloud strategy, typically those resources, you want to sit in very close proximity, right? So a great example here in the U S is the East coast. I mean, Ashburn, anybody who's in cloud and is in <laughs> probably anywhere in the world, but especially here in the United States, you know, we know that uh, that Northern Virginia tech hub is, it's unbelievable, right? The data center operators that are there, the, the cloud provider regions, they, they all have regions that sit there, right? So if I'm building out a multi-cloud strategy, that's probably one of the primary places where I'm gonna, I'm gonna build it out. Um, one of the great things that uh, tools that we have is a, a virtual routing appliance. 
that a customer can turn up on demand. It sits on top of our private network. It sits, the, the appliance itself physically sits right at the edge of the cloud provider networks. So if I want to route from say AWS, I have some front end applications that I'm utilizing in AWS and I want to keep, you know, the Oracle databases, people have Oracle databases. I want to integrate those two networks together. You know, one option is doing that over the internet, which, you know, the reliability issues there, security issues there, also throughput issues. An easy way to do that is to have a, a virtual routing uh, type of platform that you have access to. So that's one of the probably unique use cases or main use cases that we see. The other thing that's great about that is I can still offer that virtual edge. I can still build private connectivity back to my resources at Farnham as well uh, at 1623 or any data center across the Megaport network. So that's kind of one of those, uh, I don't know if it's a unique use case, um, but you know, certainly one that uh, I think customers aren't always aware of that they're able to use uh, you know, as a service type of routers uh, as prevalent as they are today. Oh, that's great. Well, this kind of conversation has been amazing and I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, anything else you'd like to add before we head on oh, out man. of here? Wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes it's hard to shut me up, so I don't know. It's, that's a risky <laughs> proposition. Uh, but, you know, I, I think that the other thing that I would add is um, that, that we didn't really touch on is, is building in that resiliency as well. Uh, you mentioned out of 1623 Par Farnham that, uh, you know, we have dual fiber, uh, fiber paths from a layer one perspective and then from a layer two perspective, uh, you know, have, we have protection across the network. The other thing that's a key tool to have in the bag, and again, bringing those edge connections into uh, your data center, ultimately from far away, is being able to build that high availability architecture and, and that resiliency across the platform. So the only other thing I would say around that hybrid cloud is, you know, work with a strategy that does allow you to uh, connect potentially in multiple geographical locations. Um, uh, but, you know, also gives you the, the, the flexibility to, you know, manage it as you see fit. And I think that's it. Um, yeah. Maybe there's I'm probably sure, more. I'm sure there's, there's a lot more we could go on forever. But. Yeah, no, we could. I appreciate <laughs> that. Uh, thanks for uh, for hosting, Greg. And uh, it's been a great conversation. And thanks to uh, JSA TV. Yep. Thanks, Mike. And, and thank you, JSA TV. And we'll see you on the next one.